powerful morning prayer before you start your day. Hello friends, it's Joseph, and welcome to With Mary, the big family that helps you to pray. Please subscribe now and click on the bell to be sure to receive all of our new prayers and updates. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, in this morning prayer, we wish to begin our day in your presence, in your blessing, and in your light. For this prayer on Friday, March the 29th, on this Good Friday, we bless you, Lord, for your entire passion, from Gethsemane to your burial. Give us a humble and contrite heart on this day, a heart fully open to your love to receive the streams of water and blood flowing from your wounds, from your heart as a source of mercy for us and for the whole world. We ask you to be closely united to Mary on this day, to follow you to the foot of the cross and entrust all humanity to you, all those relying on our prayers and for all those around us who do not know you. Jesus, in your mercy, please forgive us. And we also thank you for your salvation. Jesus, be merciful to us and to the whole world. Amen. Dear friends, may your day be blessed in the name of the Lord. And I invite you to bless the Lord this morning in the comments of the video and also to entrust the prayer intentions that you carry in particular today so that others praying may intercede for you in beautiful acts of fraternal friendship. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, be the guide and light of my day. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, Creator, come from your bright heavenly throne. Come, take possession of our souls and make them all your own. You who are called the Paraclete, best gift of God above, the living spring, the living fire, sweet unction and true love. You who are sevenfold in your grace, finger of God's right hand, his promise, teaching little ones to speak and understand. O guide our minds with your blessed light, with love our hearts inflame, and with your strength which never decays, confirm our mortal frame. Far from us drive our hellish foe, true peace unto us bring, and through all perils guide us safe beneath your sacred wing. Through you may we the Father know, through you the Eternal Son, and you the Spirit of them both, thrice blessed, three in one. All glory to the Father be, and to the risen Son, the same to you, O Paraclete, while endless ages run. Amen. O Lord, how many are my foes! Many are rising against me. Many are saying to me, There is no help for you in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I am not afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord. Deliver me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. May your blessing be on your people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From the Gospel of John When he had said this, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, to where there was a garden, into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, 
went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas his betrayer was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said, I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside, so the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made, because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium, it was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium, in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law, the Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone, in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered him, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. 
So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to the law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this description because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, 
Behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the Spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day on that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then the other one, who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you may also come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again another passage says, They will look upon him, whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified there was a garden, and in the garden was a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they lay Jesus there, because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, a saviour who would free us from our foes, from the hands of all who hate us. So his love for our fathers is fulfilled, and his holy covenant remembered. He swore to Abraham our father to grant us, that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all our days. As for you, child, you shall be called a prophet of God, the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Father, through Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit, we entrust to you all our intentions for this day. For the conversion of sinners, Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls in purgatory, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and in our countries, Lord, hear our prayer. For our rulers and leaders, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the Pope, all priests, consecrated men and women, and all the baptized, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the vulnerable, the sick, the migrants, the poor and the humiliated, Lord, hear our prayer. For a day filled with God's blessings, Lord, hear our prayer. For my family, my meetings, my appointments today, Lord, 
hear our prayer. For your will to be done in every heart today. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. I, a faithless sinner, renew and ratify today in thy hands the vows of my baptism. I renounce forever Satan, his pomps and works, and I give myself entirely to Jesus Christ, the incarnate wisdom, to carry my cross after him all the days of my life, and to be more faithful to him than I have ever been before. In the presence of all the heavenly court, I choose thee this day for my mother and mistress. I deliver and consecrate to thee as thy slave, my body and soul, my goods both interior and exterior, and even the value of all my good actions, past, present, and future, leaving to thee the entire and full right of disposing of me and all that belongs to me without exception, according to thy good pleasure, for the greater glory of God, in time and in eternity. Amen. Do not fear, Joseph, son of David. Take Mary, your wife, into your home. Righteous man, you call him Jesus, begotten of the Holy Spirit in Mary. Saint Joseph, father of Jesus, pray for the church and for us, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, with your light enlighten us. Saint Michael the Archangel, with your wings protect us. Saint Michael the Archangel, with your sword defend us. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast down to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I trust in you. 
Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us who have recourse to you. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. Our Holy Guardian Angel, watch over us, guard us, protect us. All the saints of heaven, pray for us. All the saints celebrated on this day, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoyed this morning prayer before you start your day, then I invite you to share it with all those around you. So thank you for participating. I want to offer you my free ebook, The Five Essential Keys to Effective Prayer. To download it, please click on the link in the comments, and you can also join the Great Novena of the Moment. I now invite you to pray today's Holy Rosary. The link will appear at the end of this video. Thank you very much, friends, for praying together, and I wish you another excellent and beautiful day. And may the Lord fill you with his grace and peace at every moment. I look forward to praying with you again in the next prayer. Until then, God bless and joy in Jesus.